Hey all, welcome to Elise's Notes. I am Sharon Jimmy Soy, third year BA English Literature student of K College Manmanam. Today I will be discussing the short story The Free Radio written by Salman Rishdi from the text Indian Writing in English. Before we get into the short story, let's get acquainted with Salman Rishdi in detail. Sir Ahmad Salman Rishdi is a British Indian novelist and essayist. He was born on 19 June 1947 in Bombay, India. His allegorical novels examine historical and philosophical issues by means of surreal characters, brooding humor, and an effusive and melodramatic prose style. His treatment of sensitive religious and political subjects made him a controversial figure. His first published novel, Grimace, appeared in 1975. Rushdie's next novel, Midnight Children, A Fable About Modern India, was an unexpected critical and popular success that won him international recognition. The novel Shame, published in 1983, based on contemporary politics in Pakistan, was also popular. But Rishti's fourth novel, The Satanic Verses, encountered a different reception. The novel was the subject of a major controversy, provoking protests from Muslims in several countries. Death threats were made against him, including a fatwa calling for his assassination. Rishti went into exile and continued his writing. He received Booker Prize for Midnight Children in 1981. In 1983, Rishti was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society of Literature, the UK's senior literary organization. In June 2007, Queen Elizabeth II knighted him for his services in literature. In 2008, the Times ranked him 13th on its list of the 50 greatest British writers since 1945. Introduction to the text The free radio is taken from the anthology East West. The story is about the sterilization campaign launched by India's ruling regime during the emergency period 1975 to 1977. It also narrates the life-sustaining illusions of the poor and also depicts how their lives are affected by the imposition of emergency in India. The title of the story highlights the incentive, the gift of a transistor radio that the health department gave to those undergoing the sterilization, surgery or vasectomy. The story is a perfect symbol of delusion and self-deception. Backdrop of the story, emergency period in India. The Indian emergency of 25th June 1975 to 21st March 1977 was a 21-month period when President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed, upon the advice of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, due to the prevailing internal disturbance, declared state emergency under Article 352 of the Constitution of India. effectively bestowing on her power to rule by decree suspending election and civil liberties now let's see the main characters of the story the first character is ramani ramani is the protagonist of the story who is a naive rickshaw driver the next character is the thief's widow ramani marries the thief's widow and she is 10 years older than him she also have five children in her previous marriage the next character is the narrator He is an old school teacher who enjoy a high social status. Now let's move into the summary of the story. The narrator of the free radio begins with a note of disappointment that Ramani, the rickshaw rider, could have had a good life. But now he is seduced by the thief's widow. Ramani is a handsome young man who inherited a brand new first class cycle rickshaw from his father. He could have got a good wife in time as well. but he fell prey to the thief's widow it was sure nothing good would happen to him since she had enchanted him he was very innocent and empty headed person so it was very difficult for him to get out of the spell of the thief's widow the thief's widow must have been 10 years older than germany she was very attractive but her mentality was very cheap when her husband died he left her not a single penny except five children the narrator suggests that The thief's widow is a prostitute. People saw men at night near her red pretty shack. Even the Benyard himself was telling me, but I personally will not comment. The narrator of the story narrates their first meeting. One day, Ramani rode into the town without a passenger, but he was smiling widely as usual as if someone had given him a ten chip tip and was singing a playback music from the radio. The thief's widow with her five children had gone to the Benia shop to buy some three grains of dal. The thief's widow called out to Ramani, "Hey rickshaw," as if to show that she can afford to ride in rickshaws. 
the right must have caused her child to remain hungry but according to the narrator it was an investment for her because she had already decided to make him her savior while carrying all five children along with the widow ramani was gasping and his veins were standing out of his legs and the narrator thought careful my son or you will have this burden to pull for all of your life after this ramani and the thieves widow were seen everywhere in the public narrator says that he is glad that ramani's mother was dead because otherwise seeing her son with the widow her face would have fallen off from shame ramani soon came into contact with some friends with whom he would drink illegal liquor in the back of rani's canteen the narrator tries to persuade ramani to stay away from this because he cares for ramani and he knew his parents when they were alive but all his efforts goes in vain the narrator does not like ramani's friends they wore the armbands of the new youth movement at that time state emergency was continuing and ramani's friends were not peace loving people they might have involved in beating up though ramani wore no armbands he was with them because they impressed him they always flattered him by telling him that he is such a handsome man who can be compared to actors like shashi kapoor and amita and he should go to bombay and invest his career in film industry they flattered him with dreams because they knew that they could take money from him at cards and buy drinks at his expense as a consequence ramani's head became filled with such movie dreams the widow could have stopped him but she also flattered him truly you have the looks of lord krishna himself except you are not blue all over she told him in the street so that everyone would know that they were lovers from the day on the narrator was sure about the oncoming disaster the next time the thief's widow visited the banya shop he called out her the widow was astounded to hear his voice faked her face in an ugly way as if he had hit her with a whip she might have calculated that if people saw her talking with a man with the social status they would stop ignoring her when she passed so she came to him he told her with dignity that she should stop seeing ramani and must find some person of her own age she reacts to him by screaming out and calling him curses and said that he was a poisonous old man who should have died years ago after this incident he left his interest in germany with the thought that he had done all he could and there were many other interesting things happening in the town for instance the local health officer had bought a big white caravan and was given permission to put it out of the way under the banyan tree the youth with armbands always guarded the caravan and every night men were taken into this van for sterilizing them the narrator did not pay attention to any of the rumors he heard all this time ramani suddenly began to tell everyone about his new fantasy it was about the arrival of a highly specialized and personalized gift very soon from the central government in delhi and it was to be a brand new first class battery operated transistor radio everybody took it as another dream ravi but germany insisted that was true and seemed happier than at any time in his life soon after the dream radio was first mentioned the couple got married one day when germany was passing the banyan with an empty rickshaw the narrator called him and asked him if he had been to the caravan ram replied that there was nothing to worry about he declares that he was in love with the widow and he made it possible to marry the widow the narrator became very angry at germany indeed he almost wept as he realized that germany had gone willingly there to sterilize himself which was being forced upon other men who were taken to the caravan the narrator rebuked germany bitterly my idiot child you have let that woman deprive you of your manhood it's not so bad ram said meaning the nasbandi it does not stop love making or anything excuse me teacher sahib for speaking of such a thing it stops baby zoli and my woman did not want children any more so now all is 100% okay also it is a national interest he pointed out and soon the free radio will arrive the narrator gave up his attempts in despair he ordered germany to go away and did not tell him that the free radio scheme was abandoned many years ago which was already known to everyone in the country after these events the widow rarely came into the town but germany worked longer hours than ever before Every time he saw any of those people whom he had told about the radio he would put one hand up to his ear as if he were already holding the free radio in it and mimic radio broadcast with vigor a agashwani hey
he announced to the streets. This is All India Radio. Here is the news. A government spokesman today announced that Ramani Rikshawala's radio was on its way and would be delivered at any moment and now some playback music. The people almost believed in his imaginary radio. Ram continued to carry the invisible radio and his caricatures of the radio channel filled the air in the streets. But there was a strange thing in his face which was much more tiring even than carrying the thief's widow and her five children in his rickshaw and he was trying to bring the radio into existence by a mighty act of will. The narrator had divined that Ram had poured into the idea of the radio all his worries and regrets about what he had done and that if the dream were to die he would be forced to face the full gravity of his crime against his own body to understand that the thief's widow had turned him into a thief of a stupid and terrible kind because she had made him rob himself and then the white caravan came back to its place under the banyan tree he did not come there for two days because he didn't want to show the health officer that he was desperate for the radio besides he was hopeful that government officials would give him the radio at his place with some kind of small formal presentation ceremony a fool will always be a fool on the third day he went to the caravan with the widow ringing his bicycle bell and imitating weather forecast ear cupped as usual after a while sounds of disagreement were heard inside the caravan germany visibly beaten is marched out of the caravan by his amban friends and his hair grease was smudged onto his face and there was blood coming from his mouth the thief's widow remained stationary even when they dumped her husband in the dust after all these incidents one day the narrator saw ramani selling his rickshaw and told the narrator that he and his family were leaving for bombay to fulfill his dreams of becoming a bigger film star than shashi kapoor or abida bachchan after some months the narrator received the first letter from ramani which was not written by himself but by a paid professional letter writer that meant he could not write the narrator received more letters filled with stories from his new career he told him that his talent was discovered at once and he was living the dream life of a film star he bought a big house and the thief's widow was good and happy and getting fat and the life was filled with prosperity though the narrator was receiving wonderful letters whenever he read them he remembered the expression which came over germany's face when he learned the truth about the free radio the free radio is a symbol of failed expectations the author of the story gives it a happy ending that brings us to the end of the session hope all of you like the video thank you for watching